Hey everyone, uh, it's early April here and that's uh, usually the time that fishing gets hot around here in Southern California. So there'll be people that will start to want to uh, get on boats and go, go out there and fish. Uh, there'll be a lot of people that have fished for a long time and know what they're doing. Uh, there will also be a lot of people that are new to the, to the sport um, and not quite know what to do and what to get. And I, I know it's uh, a little bit intimidating when you walk into a tackle store you, or you uh, walk on a sports boat and see uh, all the different types of equipment and gears and it gets uh, a little bit overwhelming and frustrating, especially as a, a new person uh, into the sport. So I want to make this video uh, outlining just the basic equipment uh, that you would need uh, when you get on, on a sports boat. And mo most of the time when um, uh, new folks uh, get into fishing uh, or they just want to try uh, giving a sports boat uh, or giving sports boat fishing a, a chance, they would usually rent their uh, their tackle from the landing and that and that's fine uh in the beginning uh, when when you just you're not quite sure if you like uh you like fishing or you like the uh, the environment so you don't want to make a big investment uh buying gears if you're not gonna uh, stick with it so and uh tackle landings um have great quality gears that, that you could rent for uh, 20 bucks a day or, or or something like that. I uh, I haven't read uh, equipment in many many years, so I, I think that's what the going rates are now. Um, but in any case, this is to outline what you would need if you were to buy your own equipment. And by and large, the 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 landings would uh, rent you this same type of equipment. All right, so there. Um, I've been fishing for a long time. Um, since I was a kid and throughout these years um, equipment has come and go and there's been a lot of changes uh, with the type of equipment we use now versus when, when I was uh, growing up but uh, regardless of, of um, any of the changes in the technological advances all the basics are still the same out here in Southern, Southern California especially on sports boats, 90% um, of the type of fishing you'll be doing will be with live bait. And the live bait that we get out here, I'll most, um, most likely be sardine. When I, when I was a kid, um, it used to be anchovies. I didn't know what a sardine looks like until I was a little bit older. Uh, but in, in the last couple of decades, uh, I would say uh, sardine has dominated our our, um, our bait so if you get on a sport boat uh, most likely you you'll be using a sardine so with that uh, the uh, the fishing out here on our coast requires um, what's called fly lining and that's that's fishing with just a hook without weight and having the bait just freely swim about so what you need for that is a setup that you could use with anywhere from 15 pound test line to 25 pound test line and um, what I have here is a um, it's my, my uh, that I use for uh, for that purpose and I usually put 20 pound test uh, leader on this now you know with the advent of spectra in recent years um, all my rods are, are filled with spectra to the top and I would just change the leader I use about a two to three foot leader and I would change the leader accordingly to whatever I want to use for that day. Um, you can do that for your own equipment or you can uh, go straight monofilament like, uh, like back in the old days, it really doesn't matter as long as uh, you're keeping it in the same class. Um, for instance, this is fly line and 20 pound test so you can reel, you know, you can fill your, your reel up with all 20 pound, 20 pound monofilament. So for my setup, um, I'm using a, a uh, Daiwa Sotiga 15 and a Super Seeker 85F. And this is a perfect setup for me for um, um, fly line and uh, 20, 20 pound test, uh, anywhere from between 15 to 25, but usually it's in the 20 pound, uh, 20 pound range. 
this reel is, is on the higher end uh, as far as price goes. And if you're a new person into the sport, you don't necessarily want to spend that much money. So and it's not required to spend that much money. Um, I think this reel retails for about 400 bucks. Um, you could get a Daiwa Sea Line or a Daiwa Seagate, uh, a Pen Phantom, Pen Squall. Those reels, um, I think they typically retail at about 100 $120. And that would work perfectly fine for, for this purpose. Um, this rod is a super secret rod. Again, it's, it's a little bit high end. You don't need that. Uh, you don't need to spend that much money uh, when you first get into the, uh, the sport. Or, or even if you know you fish after a while, you, you still wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily need um, this type of high end equipment. Um, you could get away with a rod like a, uh, a Daiwa um, Sotiga boat rods or some of those pen carnage rods. Uh, any of the, the major manufacturer factory rods uh, will have these type of rods um, for under a hundred bucks, I think. Uh, the, the important thing to look for is the rating. And a lot of rods these days will put uh, on their label uh, monofilament rating and uh, braid rating. What do you want? What you want to focus on um, is the monofilament rating because that's the leader you're going to be using, regardless of whether or not you fill your reel with Spectra, which is braid, um, and using a, a short top shot as a leader. Um, the leader is, is what the um, the class of the rods or the action of the rods will dictate. So if you want to buy a factory rod, uh, say a Pen Carnage, for this type of fly line with 15 to 20 pound test. You can get a rod that's rated 10 to 30 pound uh, monofilament. Something in that range would be perfect uh, for this type. So that's your, your first setup uh, for this, for going on a, a sports boat. You need something to be able to fly line bait with, uh, with about 25 pound test. That's a, the number one basic rod. So we'll put this aside. The second rod here, the second rod you'll need is um, something similar to the first setup. You can also use this for fly lining, uh, but with maybe heavier line, maybe with 30, 30 pound test as opposed to 20, if the fish are bigger or the bait are bigger. Um, or if you want to put on a, a sliding sinker to get, get uh, a little bit deeper um, below the surface. So you will need a second rod uh, for that. Here I have a, um, I'm using the here a Saltis 20, and uh, this is a very economical uh, reel. You can get the, this used for about um, $110. As a matter of fact, the, um, the Fred Hall show that just passed, um, Turner's had these brand new for $110, plus line. So, so that was a great deal. In any case, Something in, in this class, um, and again, I, I filled it with, um, with Spectra all the way through, and um, I would top it off with a 30-pound uh, uh, fluorocarbon leader. And fish it on a rod like this. This is a, um, a Seeker ADH or a 64ADH is, is the, the blank. So something like this would be perfect for fly lining 30 pound test line if the fish gets a lot big, a little bit bigger, or flying line with a, um, a sliding sinker, or, or maybe even use it for a drop a loop. Uh, the last couple of months I've been doing a lot of half day uh, rock fishing, uh, only because the, um, you know, there hasn't really been much of a bite out there uh, this time of year. And I've been using this a lot for rock fishing, which and it works great. You know, I can put an eight ounce torpedo on, on it and the, um, uh, the rod will be a, able to handle that, that much weight. So if you were to look for a rod in this um, capacity, that's a little bit cheaper, like one of those uh, pen carnage type rods, you, you would wanna look for something that's rated uh, 20 to 40 uh, in that range, or 25 to 50, that type of range, and just use it for a 30 pound test. So these 
these two rods, these two basic setups are what you'll be using 90% of the time if you're somebody that, that's uh, new to sport fishing or new to Southern California fishing. Um, because like I said, 90% of the time you'll be fishing bait. And these are the two rods that will, that will allow you to do that. Uh, and you'll be catching plenty of fish with these two rods. Um, if you're a, a casual fisherman and you don't go that often, maybe you go ahead half a dozen times a year, um, these two rods will, will more than, than take care of all your needs uh, during um, the, those times that, that you go out and fish. Um, okay, so the next uh, next couple of rods. Uh, yeah. Okay, the next rod that um, you would likely need if you if you continue to uh, to fish a lot uh, and uh, want to build up your whole set. Um, you see, for for fishing or or water here, um, there are really just four basic setups um, that that'll fill a, a whole set. That'll take care of all your your needs from half day, just fishing the coastal water to um, a one and a half day fishing uh, for a school tuna, school size tuna offshore. Um, so though the two rods that we, we talked about earlier with the um, with fly line and bait, that'll, that'll take care of your, uh, your bait needs. Uh, the third, a third rod that I, I would recommend if you, you, know, you wanna start uh, fishing a little more seriously is something like this. This is a, um, a bait caster, a Daiwa bait caster. I were Alexa 300 and a uh, Terramar, a Shimano Terramar 90mh rod. Uh, what this is, um, is a rod that you could use for plastics um, on the half day trip or the three quarter day trip, throwing plastics for uh, for bass and barracuda and bonita, all, all the three Bs. Um, and offshore, you can use this rod for um, small poppers like the uh, sashimi, the uh, Yuzuri sashimi uh, type poppers. They're about a one and a half ounce and it's perfect to, to throw uh, with these setup. You can catch school size tuna up to 25 pounds. Actually, I've, I've caught um, tuna up to 35 pounds on uh, this setup um, and it, it's not a problem uh, at all for it. So, so if you wanna add a third setup to your uh, your list, uh, this would be a great setup to have along with your two bait, bait sticks. Hmm. And then, the fourth setup that, that you would like um, to add if you're going to start um, fishing more and more is a surface iron uh, setup. Surface iron is, is definitely um, specialized for Southern California. There's nowhere else in the country that really use surface iron. Uh, it started from here and it's the most popular way to, to fish uh, here besides life bait. And for surface iron, uh, you need something uh, long. Uh, it's minimum of eight, uh, eight foot. Uh, but typically a nine foot and above. A lot of guys like to use 10 footers. For me, uh, over the years, I've used many, uh, many length, uh, different length rods. I've used them as, as long as 11 feet and as short as eight feet. And I found that nine, uh, nine foot range is, is uh, where I like, uh, I like it the most. So most of my jig sticks are about nine one, nine two, nine. Uh, this one I think is nine one. Um, uh, this is a, a United Composites uh, 900 Wahoo, so it's a, it's a little bit on the stiffer end rod. I think it's uh, a lot of guys fish 50 pound on this. Um, I still use 40 pound on it, but I just use it for uh, for the bigger jigs, bigger surface iron. And this is a, um, a Trinidad 16N, uh, 16NA uh, that I have on it. And it's a, it's a perfect setup for throwing the bigger iron, like the, um, the Salus uh, 7X uh, type or the JRI 4. 
which are, are a little bit heavier, uh, heavier bit jigs. So these four setups would pretty much round out any trips that you uh, that you may have um, when you go out Southern California. For for an offshore trip, uh, let's say you're going overnight tuna fishing or or a one and a half day type uh, trip. You might want to add uh, a yo-yo rod, a yo-yo rod, or a little bit heavier uh, bait stick uh, rod, which is something like this. Uh, I fished this with 40-pound tests, and it, you want this to be a, a, a little bit on the shorter end. Uh, this is a seven-foot rod, and the reason you want it to be on a on the shorter end is um, you're most likely gonna fish. Um, uh, bigger fish with this setup and um, you definitely don't want it to be too long as the, the leverage would really hurt you uh, uh, during a fight with a big fish. So for me something in the seven foot range is perfect seven, seven and a half, a lot of guys like seven and a half. A lot of guys do use eight foot rods uh, for uh, for this type uh, of fishing and, and they're fine with it. And you can use this for, for flat falls, um, for yo-yo irons, for yellow, uh, yo-yo iron for yellow tails, like a 6x junior, 6x, those type of jigs, or a flat ball for tuna, um, and it would it would work fine uh, with it. Again, these are uh, this is a, a Pro Gear reel. I don't, I'm not sure if they're still manufacturing this. They they came out a couple of years ago, and they they weren't that big of a hit. So I think you can find a good deal um, like this type of reel. This is a a V42 and this is a rain shadow rod um, uh, which is you know which is okay it's not uh, it's not too expensive so you can definitely get get a outfit like this and it would, wouldn't you know wouldn't break the bank uh, you can also uh, again go back to those factory rods like those pen carnage type rods um, you would just get ones that are rated 40 to 60 uh, and it would be perfect for something like this and get like a pen fathom 25 narrow reel or pen fathom 30 uh, reel which would be a, a sweet uh, setup for um, uh, for for doing something like this so these five really are um, would take care of everything that you would need so for offshore you know you might want to leave the um, the bass, the, uh, the plastic popper setup at home if you don't want to throw popper and add the um, uh, the yo-yo setup so you can have all four or you can you know take all five um, take all five on trips and that would definitely uh, take care of all your needs but uh, like I said most of the time people fish bait 90% of the time I would say people fish bait so the two bait rods and um, and maybe the uh, the heavy uh, the heavy rod here, the forty pound rod here. If, you know, if the uh, the fish gets bigger, um, would take care of all your all your bait needs. Um, me myself, I, I uh, personally fish a lot of uh, iron. I hardly ever fish bait. So on any given trip, uh, I would have a, a variety of jig sticks with different different irons on it. Um, and for offshore, I would have like uh, rods for different um, uh, different poppers. Um, as I, I you know, rarely have a fish bait. Here's a rod that uh, here's a setup that that's very good for um, for somebody that's new that wants to get into throwing surface iron um, because surface iron can be really productive and addictive. Once you get into it, um, you, you might find yourself enjoying surface iron fishing a lot more than bait and uh, would rather do that, uh, which is great. A lot of us, uh, including myself, uh, are that way. So this is a setup that I got um, to fish the, uh, the medium type poppers. Uh, like I, I said earlier, that the little bait caster I use for the small type poppers. These I'll use the um, the medium popper, like the Yuzuri uh, bow popper. I think they're about two and a half ounce. Um, this is a Shimano Trans 400. 
and um, a Proteus uh, 9 foot uh, 90H rod. They don't make this uh, this rod anymore because it's too long. Um, so I think they make the 8 foot 11 inches or 8 foot 10 inches uh, model. Um, so if, you, if you're able to find uh, this rod, you know, which is great. If, if not, uh, you know there are plenty of other substitute rods. Uh, Shimano Terramar uh, 90H uh, would work just as well, or any of the uh, the Phoenix rods. Um, so the reason this is great for beginners is because it has a level wine, um, so it can be a little bit easier to cast. I, I know casting is is uh, very intimidating for uh, people who don't do it often, uh, especially with uh, with braid line or spectral line. You know, one uh, backlash can just ruin your whole day. So something like this um, is a lot easier um, for uh, beginners to use. Uh, and ease into conventional. The reason, uh, person, the reason, the, uh, personally, the reason that I like these reels uh, for poppers and also for uh, baits like the uh, the mega baits or the uh, the the Shimano baits, um, cold sniper type, is because you're doing a lot of jerking, you're doing a lot of jerking and winding in slack lines. So if you're winding in slack line. Um, and you're not paying attention and you're not laying your line evenly, um, you can have problems on, on the next subsequent cast with loose lines, you know, it'll cause backlash. Uh, with the level wine, you know, it'll, it'll lay the line uh, even for you, so you don't really have to, to um, pay attention to that and just focus on working your bait. So it's, there's a lot of, of uh, jerk motions, uh, stop and start. Uh, pump and go type of action that you do with coat snipers and, and uh, poppers and things like that, which um, the level one comes in uh, really handy. Um, as opposed to like surface iron when you're just straight reeling uh, in the, uh, the lure and there's always tension on the line which just makes it easier to lay the line uh, on the reel. So anyways, yeah, that's, that's, this is another option for you guys who wants to get into surface iron uh, but don't want to get into the open face uh, conventional wheels. Uh, this is a good, uh, good option to have. Yeah, here's another surface iron uh, setup for guys who, who don't have. Um, a problem casting and have been fishing for a while or just uh, looking for oh, an overall great surface iron uh, setup to fish. Um, this is a, a new 3, uh, 322. Um, so this is one of the classic uh, surface iron reel. Um, a new, you, you're gonna, as you fish, you see a lot of uh, old timers out there. Uh, not, not, not even just old timers, just anybody who's been fishing for a while. Uh, they will tout the, um, the ability of these newels for surface iron fishing. Um, and deservedly so, they're great. They're great uh, casting wise um, and just overall fishing wise. So I, I uh, pair this up with a uh, Phoenix rod, uh, Phoenix Axis rod. And the biggest difference between uh, today's equipment and equipment of when I was growing up is how light it is. Like this setup is super light. You could cast this all day and uh, not feel tired. Um, in the old day, we would uh, fish with long glass rods, big um, pen reels, um, and it's uh, it was a bear. Um, so these days, uh, the equipment uh, is a lot better. Um, so anyways, this is another option for you guys out there who wants to get into uh, surface iron fishing. Yeah, so these uh, these setups are just the some of the basic class, type of equipment that you would need to go on on a sports boat. Like I said, I, I just want to emphasize that even though I, I've been showing you quite a few setups, uh, what you really need are the first two. Uh, those first two bait setups are will take care of uh, pretty much ninety percent of all your your fishing needs. So don't get intimidated by all the different type of equipment. 
um, you see people carrying on boats and things like that. Just grab a couple of rods, get on a boat and, and start fishing. And uh, ask around, you know, ask the, the crew uh, that will be able to help you. Um, other fishermen will definitely be able to help you. Fishermen are usually friendly by nature and they're, they're more than happy to help. So if you guys uh, have any questions uh, with, with uh, any of the equipment or uh, just questions in general on how to get started uh, on fishing sports boats, just uh, leave the questions below. Um, I'll answer all, all the, uh, the questions uh, uh, you may have and uh, hopefully I'll, give, I'll point you in the right direction. Uh, I don't know everything there is to know, um, but I uh, think I, I fish long enough to, to kind of guide you in the, the uh, right direction to get the, the type of equipment you'll need to be successful uh, with this stuff. Yeah, one of the things that I uh, didn't mention is uh, spinning equipment. Uh, spinning equipment has uh, has come a long way since I uh, was a kid. Um, the, the the drag system nowadays is is awesome on on spinning reels, and uh, line capacity has always been an issue with uh, with that type of equipment back then. But now with braided line and uh, spectra, um, that that's not an issue anymore. Uh, so you can definitely use spinning equipment as an equivalent to any of the uh, the setups that, that I mentioned, especially the, the two bait setups, the, um, the 20 pound bait setup and the uh, 30 pound bait setup. Uh, for the 20 pound bait setup, uh, you can use a reel like uh, any, any uh, size 4,000 or uh, 4,000 or 5,000 size reels uh, to fly line 20 pound test. That, that would work wonderfully. Uh, and for the, and the, for the heavier fly line, uh, the 30 pound um, test, maybe a size uh, 8,000 reel. Uh, would work great and, and of course popper fishing um, popper fishing was uh, was done with spinning gears on the east coast and uh, other parts of the world uh, before it got to here in Southern California and we we started using uh, um, baitcaster and conventional was for it and so it really started as, as something that the spinning guys use so it is perfect for uh, for that so don't be uh, don't be afraid to uh, to get spinning gears uh, if you're not comfortable with bait casting in conventional. Um, all my gears are, are pretty much conventional bait casting because I'm used to it, and that's how we fish here in Southern California. So uh, that's what I grew up with. I, I have spinning gears that I use for um, for harbors and lakes and trout fishing and type uh, and uh, that type of stuff. Uh, I think I have a video on my channel if you guys want to check it out on on uh, shore fishing that I use a lot of spinning gears for uh, drop shotting and things like that. So I don't have anything against uh, spinning equipment. Uh, so if you're more comfortable with that, uh, go for it, uh, not a problem at all. So hopefully this uh, helps somebody out, uh, some of you guys out there that wants to get into uh, fishing sport boats but uh, a little bit intimidated on the equipment and, uh, and what to get and things like that. So uh, hopefully this will give you a little bit of an idea of what of what to expect as far as gear uh, goes, and there's a lot more into it, obviously, with terminal tackle and and um, uh, how to fish and things like that. But that's that's you know, can be for a, a later topic in a later video. But as far as equipment goes, uh, hopefully, hopefully this uh, this helps uh, some of you out. All right, thanks for watching.